So for this lesson, we're going to be going through the reactivity series. Now, before we get into what the reactivity series actually is, first, I'm going to write a chemical equation down. So I'm going to write CuCl2. Okay. Now, from CuCl2, which we know is copper chloride, how would I extract this copper? How would I, how would I extract this copper? Well, I can react it with iron. If I react it with iron, what do I get? I get Cu by itself, so the copper by itself, plus the iron, chlor iron chloride. Now, why does this reaction happen? Well, we know that this reaction is a displacement reaction, right? So this, this iron will kick out this copper, and this copper will become on its own, will get on its own, and then the iron will remain here with the chloride. Okay, now, why does this reaction happen? Well, this reaction happens because the iron is more reactive than the copper, okay? And this means, or this is a displacement reaction, okay? Now, if I wanted to see uh, if this reaction would happen, would, would this reaction happen? Mg plus, let's say, um, calcium chloride, would this reaction happen? Well, how can we check? Well, we know that for this, for this reaction to happen, so for this reaction to happen, the iron has to be more reactive than the copper, right? The iron has to be more reactive than the copper, and then this reaction will happen. However, in this reaction, we have to check if magnesium is more reactive than the calcium. How do we check this? Well, we have to refer to something called the reactivity series. Now, the reactivity series helps us check whether a reaction is feasible and whether we can uh, make that reaction happen via a displacement reaction. Okay, so the way we check this is we look at the reactivity series. This is the reactivity series where it suggests that potassium is the most reactive. Most reactive. And then at the bottom, gold is the least reactive. Okay, and the way I remember this is that gold is the least reactive because we wear it as jewelry. If this jewelry reacted with uh, chemicals, then the jewelry would break down, right? And gold, we know, is, it, it doesn't break down. It doesn't decompose. That's why gold is the least reactive. And potassium is the most reactive because when we put water in potassium, it explodes. Okay? Now, you have to remember this pattern. Okay? And there are loads of mnemonics, but I want you to come up with your own mnemonic for why, uh, for, for, um, for, the, for the pattern in the reactivity series. So let's check whether this reaction is feasible. So... We have magnesium plus calcium chloride, okay? So let's check, is magnesium more or less reactive than calcium, okay? So magnesium is up here, but calcium is up here. So which is more reactive? Well, calcium is more reactive, right? So if calcium is more reactive, then can magnesium displace calcium? Well, no, it can't because we know that iron will displace copper because it's more reactive. So the more reactive thing displaces the less reactive thing. So more reactive element displaces the less reactive element. And here we know that magnesium is less reactive than calcium, right? Magnesium is less reactive than calcium. So this reaction does not happen. Okay, so let me just write this here. Not possible. Okay, and this is the reactivity series. So we can use this. We can use this reactivity series to dis decide which uh, which uh, compounds can be uh, can undergo displacement reactions. So let's look at another example. Let's look at, for example, um, let's look at let's look at calcium. Um, let's look at calcium uh, phosphate. I oh, know. Let's look at calcium sulfate plus uh, potassium. Will this reaction happen? Okay, so first we have to check, is calcium more or less reactive than uh, potassium? Or well, potassium is more reactive, so this reaction will happen. Okay, so far we've looked at what the reactivity series is and whether reactions are feasible and how to determine which metal to use to extract a different metal. Okay, now we're going to look at extraction of metals by something we call reduction. Okay, so metals, when we, when we, so we know that metals are mined from the ground, right? Metals come from the ground. So metals have to be mined. Metals are mined, uh, uh, and when they are mined, they are mined as metal ores. Now, what is a metal ore? 
A metal ore is simply a metal oxide. So for example, when I mine something, say, say suppose that this is, my, this is what I've mined, this is uh, some rock that I've mined, and in this rock, there are tiny, tiny bits of iron, okay? Now, from this, from this whole thing, from this whole sample that I've mined, only these bits are iron. So only these bits are iron. And everything else is oxide, okay? So this is an iron oxide ore. Okay, and these I this iron oxide ore only has bits of iron separated in many different places. Everything else is oxide. That means it's oxygen, right? Uh, it's a solid form of oxygen. Okay, so how do we separate the iron from the iron oxide? Well, we have to undergo a reaction by reduction. Okay, and reduction is simply removing all of the metal oxides. So we extract a metal from its ore using reduction. Reduction is simply removing the oxide, okay? And the way we do this is by using carbon. Now, why do we use carbon? Well, previously we said that reactive metals or reactive non-metals as well can displace less reactive ones. So we have to use carbon to displace the oxide, right? And how do we do this? Well, we, we, take, we take metals which are less reactive than carbon. So reduction only happens for these metals because these are the only metals less reactive. And only metals less reactive than carbon can be extracted using reduction. Okay, so if we have a zinc ore, we can reduce it to zinc by using carbon. If we have an iron ore, we can reduce it to iron using carbon. If we have lead ore, we can reduce it to just lead using carbon. However, if we had an aluminium ore, we could not reduce it to aluminium using carbon because why? Carbon is less reactive than aluminium. Therefore, carbon doesn't actually do anything to aluminium since aluminium is more reactive. So how do we extract uh, potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, and aluminium from their ores? Well, we need to use a method called electrolysis. And electrolysis simply means electricity separating the oxide. So electricity is used to break down something. Okay, and that's electrolysis, which we'll learn about. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.